we are now going to talk about the validation of PCA models. This includes selecting the number of components and also checking for outliers, which is samples that disturb the model. There are other parts of validation such as finding irrelevant variables, uh, but we will mainly focus on choosing the number of components and detecting outliers. One practical problem in validation is that all these different aspects, they are generally um, depending on each other. So for example, if you have determined a number of components, then you go and check for outliers and you find one or two samples that you have to exclude, well then maybe the appropriate number of components can change. So you have to work in an iterative fashion for now we will focus on the number of components. Let's take a simple example. Here we have six different objects and two different variables. And as you can see the two variables are rather correlated. So in this case we can actually determine at least one component, one direction where the data are very correlated they mainly spread on the line shown uh, in the plot to the right. That means that instead of two original variables, height and weight, we can actually do with one variable looking at the projection of each object onto the line. We can even attach a name on that. We could call this new latent variable, we could call that size. And then the weight and the height are just two manifest variables depending on the underlying latent variable, the size. This means that in the future, for example, if we know, know the weight, well, then we would also approximately know the height. But we cannot tell exactly whether a person is a little bit taller or smaller from the weight. There's not enough information here. And that's why we only need one component in this case and probably cannot justify two components. An interesting point that you can make from the plot shown here uh, relates to how many samples or objects do you need in order to fit a PCA model. As you can see the way the principal component is plotted here, one principal component is very similar uh, to, for example, a linear regression. And for linear regression, most of us have some intuitive feeling for how many samples we need. Of course, we could do linear regression with one point, but that would probably not be very good. Normally, we would like to have, say, three or four or five samples in order to do a linear regression model that we could have some confidence in. Of course, that depends on how these points are scattered, but as a general rule of thumb, at least four to five samples would be nice. And exactly the same holds for PCA. For every component that we determine, it's quite appropriate to have at least four to five samples per component in order to be able to uh, compute that direction in the multivariate space uh, in a fairly accurate way. Having more samples would of course uh, be useful, but we can do with say four to five samples. Well, when we have to determine the number of components, what do we want to determine? What should the PCA model do? We want the PCA model to generalize our data. And that means finding the systematic variation that is not specific to the samples we have now, but which tells us something about the population that they represent, tell us something about other similar samples. So the model should describe the systematic variation and leave out the specific noise. And a fairly straightforward way to test that is by the use of cross-validation. We will first show the principle of cross-validation with an example uh, from curve fitting. So this is not PCA, but just an example to show the principle of cross-validation. On the plot we can see seven points, and these seven points we want to fit a curve to. Uh, 
Now we can fit, for example, a first order polynomial, second order, etc. In the lower plot you can see a first, second and sixth degree polynomial fit. And from those three plots you can see that the first order polynomial seems to get the trend, but not really the curvature in the data. If you look at the second order polynomial, the green line, you can see that that seems to be a very reasonable model of the data. It does capture the curvature in the data, even though we don't get perfect predictions. With the sixth degree uh, polynomial, we get perfect fit to all the seven points. So this curve fits perfectly these six, uh, seven specific points. But you can also see that it's probably not a very good generalization because it's fitting all the noise in the data in order to fit the seven points perfectly and thereby the interpolation that you get from that curve is not very reasonable for new samples. That's the situation we want to avoid and it's similar to PCA if we take too many principal components. We can get a perfect, perfect fit by taking sufficiently many uh, components but then we will be fitting the noise. That would lead to overfit. We also don't want to take too few components. That would be similar to the first degree polynomial. Then we are not really capturing all the systematic variation in the data. And there's a way to test this. And cross-validation is one such way. What we do in cross-validation is that we leave out samples one at a time. If you look at the data and the plot in the lower corner, well then we have taken out sample number three and then we fit the three different models to the remaining samples. After fitting the model we predict what sample three would be in that model and compare that to the actual value. And you can see that the second degree polynomial will have a very small error whereas both the first and the sixth degree will have high errors. We do that for all the samples. So we take out a sample, calculate the model, predict the left out and do that until all samples have been left out once. So then we get an error and we can take the sum of squares of that. So we get a sum squared error for all the different models. And we simply pick the model which has the lowest error. And in this case that would be the second degree polynomial. In PCA we do exactly the same. We fit a one component model in cross validation so we leave out samples and see how well the PCA model predicts them. We do a two component model and if that model has a lower fit well then we say that the two component model is better. Usually the first local minimum is chosen as the correct number of components but sometimes it's not that simple to see exactly how many com components to use. Let's take an example. Here we have a sensory data set. Ten different breads. They have been assessed by eight different judges with respect to eleven different descriptors. The judges can be seen as a kind of replicates and we would like to average over the judges so we get a matrix of 10 breads and 11 attributes. And now we want to do a PCA model to see how the different breads and the different attributes relate to each other. Here's the result that you get from a PCA model uh, done in, in the software on Scrambler. The upper plot shows scores and loadings and in the lower right plot, we have the plot we want to discuss right now, the explained variance, which goes from 0 to 100%. And if we look at the blue bars, they tell us the fit. So that's the fit of the model to the samples used for fitting the model. And you can see that it goes trivially to 100%. So the more components, the better the fit and at some point you will get a perfect fit. This does not mean that an eight component model for example in this case 
is the most appropriate to use. If we look at the purple bars, then we have the cross-validated fit. And you can see that after three components, the fit will actually decrease. So that means that anything beyond three components is not really describing the systematic variation in the data. So there's no sense in using more than three components. We can even go a little bit more into detail with that. If we look at the fit at three components, well, the fit to the actual data is about 90%, whereas the cross-validated fit is about 80%. We can see how that fit is derived from the individual variables. So the fit of 90% relates to the 11 different descriptors. And in this slightly confusing plot here, we see the fit for the individual variables for one component, two components, three components. The top plot is the calibration fit, the fit to the actual data, and the lower one is the validation fit, the fit uh, found through cross-validation. So at if the last part for the free component model, which is the one we have chosen, well then we see that there are two variables, the first one and the last one in the upper plot that have a fairly low fit, but even worse, if we look in the lower cross-validation plot, we see that these two variables can actually not be described by the model. In the cross-validated results, they are below zero. So that means that these two variables are really just disturbing the model. The cross-validated and the actual fit is not consistent. And we can also see these two variables in the loading plot. We can see that they have low loadings, close to zero, meaning that they are not really uh, well described by the major variation in the data. So that also indicates that these variables are not very important for the model, and in fact just disturbing the model. So based on that, it makes sense to remove these variables and redo the model. And if we do that, we get a model where both the fit and the cross-validated fit will improve, and also where the difference between the cross-validated and actual fit decreases. And that is a good thing, because that means that the overfit is less pronounced. Cross-validation is the technique most often used for selecting the number of components. It is important to remember that cross-validation is just providing an indication of the number of components. You have to use your knowledge about the data to actually decide what the right number of components is. In the Unscrambler, the software will often like to suggest the number of components, but the rule is that you should never use the number of components that's automatically decided by the software. You have to decide what the right number of components are. If there are outliers in the samples, you might get wrong results. If you have noise in the data, well, a lot of noise, your results will be unreliable. You can resample or redo your cross-validation several times to get an idea about how certain uh, your choices are. And then, additionally, you also have to use other diagnostics, and you have to look at your model and see if it makes sense. If you have a data set where component 5 and 9 gives you a perfect separation between healthy and sick persons, well, no matter what the software is telling you about the number of components, that cannot happen accidentally if you have a high number of samples, so these components must be correct in some sense. And you can use that. That is not an unscientific uh, decision to say that I include these components because they contain valid uh, information based on my background knowledge about the data.